back to our YouTube channel for those of you who don't know who I am Ikamalam Gubaba Luamtati so and today we've got the one the only Mr. Kakri saw himself ba 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 y'all know what time it is Ikamalam Gubaba Luamtati Baba Lua is the brand yes <laughs> Everything is named after Baba, like BNM. Everything, everything okay. is named after Baba. I'm just checking because <coughs> I No, I like it. I really do. Manga. I do like it. I really do not have a problem with the name. Ne. It's just that I prefer using Baba because people have known me as Baba. Perfect. Makes sense. See, if, you know if people are referring to me as Ulino Kanyo, then people are like, who's that now? So yeah. Anyway, welcome, welcome you guys to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. For our subscribers, thank you so, so much for keeping the fire bye, 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 burning. Bye, 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 bye. You know, guys, without you, yeah. we would have been nowhere. Thank you so much for all the love in our previous video where we spoke, up, spoke about raising kids your way, yeah. traditions and stuff. That really did well. Like, yeah, it sparked quite a debate. Uh, I even got like some messages actually. On Instagram, Same. about people's experiences, because someone wrote it, like wrote me a DM saying, you know, she, I think it was a she. She was the child mm. who couldn't speak their own home language at home, mm. and she was always referred to as Landana Sekapa, you know, <laughs> and she felt embarrassed and that she didn't know how to speak her own language. She didn't, she couldn't communicate with her own people, like go to Gil. So that was quite insightful. Interesting. But yeah, it was a, was a job debate. It was a very nice one. Yeah. yeah. So from that, as a follow-up, it's not really a follow-up video. It's another video. Um, in today's video, you guys, I wrote some questions down. Please don't be alarmed as to why I'm looking down. Well, I was reaching to school out now. for the page. Today, <laughs> we have a QA. and a um, We asked school. you guys to send um, through questions on Instagram of things that you would like to ask from us. I actually meant to go back the next day to screenshot all the questions, mm -hmm. but I was too late. Did they all disappear? They disappeared. And I only managed to get 11 questions. I screenshot a lot, mm. but from the a lot that I screenshotted, there were duplicates. Oh, yeah, so I from that, I managed to get 11. So guys, if your question is not asked, I'm really sorry. Um, and in any case, we wouldn't have been able to cover all the questions. Otherwise, it would have been such a lengthy video. Haven't we done this before? We you know? have, but that okay. was like a long time ago. It was even before we got married. We oh, were still dating. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Oh, YouTube? Oh, yeah, we were on YouTube before we got married. Yeah, we were on YouTube. We have a whole wedding series on YouTube from Lobola. Oh, yeah, you're to right. To Lola Bayeni. This is the Sidas, Lola Bayeni. Wow. Is what it's nothing to do with sin. <laughs> There's nothing correct. wrong with dating. We actually need to have a topic about dating before getting married. How long you should date before getting married. That's an interesting one. What is the ideal time frame? Is there a time frame? Yeah. What is the right way to go about it? When so do you gentle. decide when you want to marry someone? That's an interesting topic. Yeah, true. That is yeah. an interesting topic. Very interesting. Anyway, you guys. How much does that do when you are 50? Wow. I was on my side. I was on my Oh, hell no. Hell to the no. So, question number one is, I'm so scared, guys, to get into these questions. But anyway. Why? Just keep it. <laughs> if you don't know the answer, Pass. that's what you do with MC Jesus. That's true. <laughs> So question number one is define marriage according to your own relationship or with your partner. I think marriage is like a relationship. It doesn't really change from you guys dating. But now you've got bigger responsibilities and you have a contractual agreement with the person. So yeah, that's what I think. Marriage is 
according to the relationship I have with my partner. Nothing's changed, really. Let me just read the question. <laughs> You're quite define me according to your own relationship with your partner. Yeah, so according. how do you define marriage? Yeah, but it, it, it's... Yeah, I agree with you that, I mean, nothing much changes with the relationship that you have with each other. Um, I mean, you don't love someone more after you've married them. <laughs> to say now, hey, there's 10% more mm. I love, you know. I think when you make the commitment that you want to, you know, marry somebody, you've already assessed how you feel about that person. And just by fact that now there's this new contract doesn't change. Uh, the nature of the relationship or the feelings towards each other. It may change a couple of things in terms of how you conduct yourself um, as a married man compared to a dating man. I think there are some, um, there are a few differences, you know, because sometimes they're not quite strict about how they go about doing things. Like, for example, um, one can go out for a very long time and come home, exceeding and all those things when, you know, but once you're married, obviously, those types of change, things change a bit. Uh, there's a lot more, you need to be a lot more responsible about um, how you conduct yourself as a person because now you're in this union that is recognized not only you know, by two, but it's also recognized by society as well as, as, as your parents and, and, and family. So there's a bit of responsibility um, that increases as opposed to where you just know live with somebody where, you know, and, and you also know that if things fail, you can just jump and there are not really any consequences <clears throat> except to how the, the hurt that you feel. But there are no other real consequences that normally follow um, the, the breakup of people who are not married. married. But when you're married, hey, your relationship, I, I think there's, there is some shift in terms of also the, the effort that you put in, the amount of work uh, that you put in to keep the marriage alive. Um, yeah, in that sense. But I don't think you wake up and you say, you, I love this person more now, now that they're my wife, or I appreciate them more. But I think by the fact that you made a decision to marry them, you already know that. But it just means that you need to intensify things a bit in terms of how you behave and all of that once you're married. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think you've said everything, yeah. basically. Um, but in terms of things changing, it's like you guys dating, but on steroids. It's my like kind of of like, 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 <laughs> No, not in a bad way. <laughs> Obviously not in a bad way. Yeah. Like nothing changes, as you said. Because yeah. I think what I'm getting from this question is, like, does it change or anything? Yeah. Like nothing Nothing changes. Changes. It's just a more solid yeah. kind of partnership or relationship. Yeah. There might be a few things that change, but there are certain relationships where actually literally nothing changed. Because yes, that's true. Yeah. like how they conduct themselves in the relationship, the level of respect they have for each other, the commitment that they have. Or like you don't go out the whole night. There's already that commitment. By the time they get married, there's not even a need. He's like, West. I can't believe you what he's gotten into. <laughs> so, yeah, so things, changes can happen, good and bad. But it just depends on how the relationship was. Even. I know so, people that get worse, and then they got divorced like mm. a few months or mm. like one year into the marriage. Because I feel like some people, well, guys, especially men, they, like, they, when they've gotten married, mm -hmm. they've got the sense of comfortability of, I've won the prize. Now she's, there's nothing she can do about it. She's here to stay. She can't go home. That's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. And now, what is it? Africa, Friday to Sunday. And a big weekend, young as of weekend, you just got tatty neck. I change down the arm. I change every day. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've seen that a lot, like mm. growing up with the people around me. And even now, actually, as a, an adult. You can see men doing that. Mm -hmm. 
You do see them definitely. Utibana na bando tu bana every day, every like not every day, but during the weekend. Oko oko sana umdu busy live his best life. But what if that's the nature of the marriage? You know, they allow each other. It's not because they've gotten worse. Marriages are not the same. Oh, the relationship. No, I'm talking about the, like a person that's changed now. Because oh, okay. we were talking about how oh, does okay. it change? Like I'm talking about a person that has changed. I, like I, 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 before, and yeah. then I had like a guy. I come yo. That's a hook. I'm kezele um to like I come like I be out of control, man. I've got keze um to come he. But but I also want to say that that it's not just men always. It's mm. just changing out of the blue. Sometimes I feel that women are all fun before you get married. <laughs> And when you get married, they then change, want to control you. Like, now they want to take away your freedom, all of it, uh, as a man. There are certain things now that you enjoy doing before. Nobody's called wrong. Um, like, spending time with your friends. Now, friends that were accepted for the four years or five years or six years or two years that you are together before you got married. The moment you get married and certain things get taken away from you as a guy, and that's how guys feel. That's how they feel, and then they retaliate by not giving a damn. You see, because I think both parties need to watch themselves when they get into marriage. Don't say now we in a different relationship. It's still the same relationship. Uh, you guys still need to treat each other the same. How long see see uchadile? Because that fright that freaks guys out. Like yeah, boy, when you now change and they want to control them and take away the the certain privileges that does not necessarily affect the marriage negatively. Yeah, but all of a sudden now, everywhere you go, like we are phone, we are land, like you never like free, you never out of your house, and you never have time to spend with your boys and talk nonsense. Because we also need that part of our lives as men to be stimulated. I don't want to spend hundred percent of my time with with my wife as much as I love her, but there are certain aspects of my life that she cannot stimulate. She cannot have a conversation with me about football. That's going to like relieve my stress. After an hour of debate, we she actually cannot have the type of conversation that I have with my friends about life, about businesses, about nonsense, you know. Because I have friends that we don't talk nothing that is progressive in life, but it's just nonsense. But I feel like sometimes when women get married, they just they want to hog, like they want to like you're mine now, <laughs> and then the reaction from the guys like, this is too much, and then. Such things happen. So both parties need to watch themselves. Men, when you get married, that's the beginning. It's not the end. So I go and the many prize now because that's that's when the work must start. Because now you've made a commitment for life to this person to love them forever. So you must work every day. Now it's easy when you get married to a man. If you want to spend the rest of your life with the man, don't hog him. You know, to change and all of a sudden you want him all to yourself. So that's what I wanted to say in respect of that. Got gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Next question is, how do you keep fun in your marriage? You. Hello. You can answer this first. Yo, I think you've had fun since the day. Serious, we've been doing this since the day we met. Yeah, because we like, <laughs> no, the thing is, the thing, the thing is, our, our marriage, how I've, how our how relationship, you view it. how I view it, it has the, the elements of a friendship and the element of siblings, like infused <laughs> into one. You know, um, we, 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 we best friends, mm. so we party together, we we take staycations together, we go away often. We have lunches, I can't recall how many times a month, That's with true. random stuff, and we have a lot of, you know, jiggy, jiggy, jiggy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so wow. yeah, so I think that's how we, we keep our, 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 our relationship. Um, what's the question? Fun. Fun, yeah. Yeah, and exciting. And also, very, 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 very important. We take care of ourselves. Like, I need to look good for my wife. Oh, I need yeah. to look good. Oh, yeah, man. take care of yourself. Don't, don't, don't do that. That's why like, I did gym. I want to nah, home. I need to go to the gym. I need to cut my hair. I need to buy new clothes. I need to buy a new cologne. I need to look good. fresh for my woman. You need to buy new hair. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, yeah. don't stop. One thing my mom emphasized and still emphasizes, I just want clumsy. So bad clumsy. I can picture her now. I can literally hear her voice. Oh, oh so, so, so bad clumsy. You don't need to sit in your way. I actually need to go underwear shopping. When I underwear is it tiny way all day? Um, to work off You know, they now well, she always says you need to. Um, have a good baby pajama in your own. Hey, those things. That's one thing my mom always used to cry about. She's like, you can't be, unless I'm hungover, okay? Then you'll see me slacking. <laughs> <laughs> because I saw that from the next. She's like, but to back lambs with tin well tin. She up, I offer I shall be spending with Cindy swung up. She was. What are you fresh and is meaning with Cindy swung up? Who she gave her now, Libelag, who comes shall not let English yak. Necown yak, or yours, she always says that. So. Yeah, man, like put in the effort. Don't yeah. stop dating. Look yeah. good. Because when you look good as a person, you your energy changes. You're more confident. You're more... Yeah. You have good aura around you. You just, you know... And you want to go on. out, you know. Besides, like, let's go on as, dates. And, you know, yeah, all yeah. of those nice things. Besides all those symbolic things, it's like it's attractive. Like it, it turns a man on. You right. Know? Even a woman. Like if your man yeah. looks good, you're... I'm a big lambs. You have been in touch. Yeah. And you no, we must look. I think good. that's one. I'm good. Um, 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 Steve Harvey, no, Majori Harvey. Mm, yeah. Oh, oh, they they are look like, good in their sixties. Yeah, yeah. They, take care like, they take care of each other and take care of themselves. Yeah. So yeah, and another thing that keeps it fun is being spontaneous. Yes. Like we are not like people that are strict on a schedule and yeah. we're not robotic. We think and we do. Like if we decide that we're going away this weekend, mm-hmm. we'll make a plan and be like, and do we have money? Let's go for it. Yeah. So yeah. And you, got, and man. Like, you must get along. Like if you don't get along, ah, it's over. Like no. if you can't, if you can't sit in the end, like that's the beginning of the end. That's true. Uh, you must really get along with the person that you marry. Mm-hmm. Like there must be your friend at Kegise. I was making serious talks. I was uplifted when you're down. And if if as you guys you don't get along, right? That's true. Then who's a bandsim? Yeah, that's true. Todd, do you guys pray together? That's a pretty straightforward one. Yes, yes we, we do. do. Okay, the next one. What do you think a healthy relationship should provide for the people in it? So basically, how do we define a healthy relationship? I think this is kind of like repeti- repetitive to, what we've, just to what we've just said. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we've said it like just be healthy first as a human being. I think it's very important. People don't emphasize how much you can destroy a relationship if you are not a healthy person alone. Yeah, because if you are in negative. If you are in a negative space, you can easily be negative and affect everything because you are with your partner and how you behave as a person will influence yeah. how you affect that person. So I think for me, like what I realized last year, because it was officially like, no, it was two years of marriage. Like just the importance of being healthy as an individual before mm. you rely on someone else to make you happy as mm. a person. Like it's very important for you to be in a healthy mental state so that mm. you add value yeah. in the person's life that you are worth. So if you are not okay emotionally, you can easily be like a bitch. Sorry, I <laughs> just use that word. You can easily be a bitch to your person if mm. you are... Like, mm. not in the healthy mind state. For example, if you're a woman and you have insecurities, you can easily impose insecurities to your person, even if they did nothing. Like, it's just how you're going to behave and it will affect your relationship. And if you are, example, for example, stingy with money, like, that's a negative mental state, then you won't want to do kind gestures to your partner and that will also negatively affect your relationship. Like if you're not uh, motivated to better your life 
and your partner is a person that's motivated to better his life, then you'll negatively impact him. Yeah. And you won't be a good partner to have because yeah. you're not driven to... You'll be jealous. <laughs> you'll yeah. be a jealous partner. So it's important to be healthy first before you can be healthy for the people around you. Like, yeah. be in a healthy mental state. Fix yourself first before you get into any relationship um, so that you can be a good partner. Otherwise, you're going to do more harm than good. Like, what's the point of getting to a relationship if you're going to end up, mm. like, being hurt? Because you just do that. Because they're looking for healing. See, that's the mm, That's problem. true, yeah. yeah. But you can't heal through... Some, yeah, I know. Like, um, it will... It's a temporary fix. Mm. Because it makes you feel better. And what yeah, happens yeah. to you when you've healed, what? then you're not attracted to that person anymore. anymore. Because you've taken what you needed. Or you may not have relapses. They because you didn't heal before you came in. That's true. Yeah. My, my summation of the answer to this question, and I'll speak mostly, well, I think for both parties, or mostly for guys, <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, I think, it's, I think it's, there's one, one specific aspect that every guy, I'm generalizing now, is looking for in a, in a relationship or marriage, and it, it's, it's peace. Like we see at that peace, yeah, bo. So when you come home after a long day at work, um, you appreciate when you come home to a peaceful home. But also, you only deserve peace if you maintain it and, and bring it. You know, I'm just saying. So you can't just come home and say you need peace, but you're not bringing peace. So peace is is is, is one thing that keeps the relationship healthy um, for me specifically. And, and, and the other is, is a safe space to be vulnerable uh, because as men, we don't have a lot of those spaces where we can cry and, and, and be vulnerable and, you know, um, admit some of the things that we're going through and our witnesses. Uh, but a partner can only feel safe um, if you don't use the vulnerable things that they disclose to you against them when you fight. Because I, 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 I know that often in relationships, when people disclose certain things in moments of vulnerability, they say, So it's, it's so once you manu sends us on, then you are, you are taking away the safe space in the relationship. Then your partner is not going to be comfortable to share things with you. Um, and, and once they're not comfortable getting able to share things with you, that in itself is going to be a problem. So peace and, and the safe space. Is, is what, for me, person, personally, um, provide a healthy, yeah, relationship. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yo, this is a personal one. Yes, yeah, I like <laughs> What are your toxic <laughs> traits? <laughs> what? Sure. What are your toxic <laughs> traits? traits? Um, <sighs> what are my toxic I've got so many. Me too. Let me start. <laughs> One of my toxic traits is I don't want to talk. At least not right now. So if, if you really hurt me or if I'm really hurt about something and you want to talk, you want to address it now, it's not going to happen. Um, it's just going to end up in a, in a huge fight if you try to resolve something with me immediately. Um, because I wear my heart on my sleeve, so once it's broken, I just I just choose just like I don't want to talk until I have had a conversation with myself and analyze the situation before I can engage with you. And it can be toxic because if somebody wants to talk and resolve this thing right now for the sake of peace in the household, but you're not willing to do it, or for not having kumbe the whole day in the house whilst you're going through this thing, doing your analysis of what the hell is going on, then it affects the environment, you know. And you can see that, you can, you, I can also t- sense that, you know, the environment is tense now. And it's because of me. But <laughs> I'm just not ready to, uh, to engage on this particular issue because of how I feel. I need to calm down. Because the danger is, if I try to engage with you um, whilst I'm in that space, it's just going to be a mess. Because I'm not going to be rational, I'm not going to be logical. And I don't like when I engage in any discussions or... 
uh, dispute resolution issues, and I'm not I'm not objective. But yeah, that's just that's that's a toxic trait for me. Uh, I'm trying to work on it to try and deal with things immediately so that I don't create uh, that awkwardness in, on that day that I'm not ready to talk. Mm. Yeah, I think that's one of my my toxic traits. For me, I think it's also pretty straightforward. I'm a very confrontational person. So, yeah, like, I'm very confrontational. Sometimes you really need to just not confront situations. <laughs> but I believe in talking about things immediately and getting over it so that we can get past whatever mountain we are facing. And sometimes that's a great thing. Sometimes it's not really a good, great thing because... Mm. Sometimes you really just need to be in the right mental state to talk about things because yeah. you can be very emotional when you're dealing with things in the heat of the moment. And then, pull me and then it will just be worse than what it was before. No, so that's like, yeah. yeah, I think it's my last born tendency of getting things that I want and... Mm-hmm. Like growing up, like I always used to get what I wanted and yeah. I always used to get my way. So it's one thing that I'm also learning now. Um, even with work, like not getting certain campaigns, I used to get so emotional and throw all my toys out of the cot <laughs> because I'm so used to getting my way. So, but I think I'm slowly getting better and like I'm slowly learning to make peace with yeah. certain things yeah. and learning to just give things time and not want to always like take control of situations yeah 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 and yeah we're still young guys um we're still working progress yeah like i think it's important to have honest conversations and review mm. those nicky feedback now about what did i do wrong or yeah. what is wrong with me in yeah. this situation yeah yeah, we're still learning, and I think the first step to growth, uh, personal development, the first step, if there's anything that I've ever learned in school about personal development, is, is acknowledging your, your shortfalls <coughs> uh, and owning them and working on them. Um, and I think this answer ties into one of the questions that I've seen here. Uh, maybe we can just deal with it. Uh, how do we deal with having different backgrounds in, in, in our marriage? And also, I think our toxic traits may also come from our different backgrounds, I guess, because you mentioned the fact that you're a last born and, and all of that. That's also one of the differences in our backgrounds. I'm a first born, and one of my toxic traits to tie in with this question um, is a first born is like, I'm tough. Yeah, well, I'm tough. And sometimes I'm tough in situations where I shouldn't be. So I'm not only on myself and on, on the people around me. I'm always like, no man, you know, you can, you know, you can, you can overcome this. You can, you know, but sometimes you don't. You just need to understand and allow the person to go through the emotions. Don't try to motivate. Don't try to tell them whatever. Just be there and support them. Because uh, I always look at things and I'm like, ah man, away. <laughs> you know, because you know, that's your firstborn tendencies. You always had to take care of people and always have to overcome stuff. No one, I mean, you don't get a, a helping hand a lot when you're a first one. So you deputy sort of take parent. that. Yeah, you deputy parent, you take care of everyone and you suppress your emotions because no one cares, you just take care of your younger sibling. So, so those things, when you get older, they become a, a, a strength, but also a challenge in when you meet and engage with, other people, especially people of different backgrounds. And when you have first born, you have one, and that's the band as well. You know what I mean? That's true. Because we get each other, you know, we get each other. We have to make this happen. You know, my when something bad happens, she needs to cry about it first <laughs> before she goes to fight. Like, she's like, cry about it, go through the emotions, ask herself questions, why me, what, what. Because we, we know why us. It just happens. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. 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 And maybe finish this question. How do we... Wait, how do you deal with having... I think the importance of dealing uh, with having different backgrounds is being aware that mm. when you're dealing with your partner, 
how and why they are behaving the way that they are and how why they are thinking the way that they are yeah um one of the things that we learned in our marriage counseling from Mfunsu Zondi was when you get married you need to be sensitive and understand like sensitive towards your partner mm-hmm. in certain certain situations and understand um why they are handling things the way that they are because in some parts of your heart you are overstimulated mm. yeah well so he made an example about us and he said like sometimes your wife will be emotional and you'll mm. think that she's being too emotional yes. because when she was brought up her parents overstimulated the emotional side mm-hmm. and like oh baby yeah, and then okay. when she gets angry at you for not picking her up You, you must also have that at the back of your mind. That's how she grew okay. up. Okay, the reason why it upset is because ukhulen yeah. elhlo. Yeah. So it's important even in the midst yeah. of your fights to be mindful of ba. The reason why they don't hate you, your partner doesn't hate you, but the reason why like they are reacting this way in the situation is because of mm. their reasoning background, and yeah. background. And for me, I'm a soul believer of psychology and how, like I am so obsessed with understanding the human mind, mm-hmm. how behave. we behave. And most things are from when we are children, like yeah. up until we are adults. Um, I was listening the other day, it says that your mind, you stop growing when you're 30. So from when you're, like you after 30... Growing. you mentally your mental capacity so, so, so you've you've reached your you've developed your like mental like you there's no changing you from now on. you are speaking to the ultimate <laughs> so like at, like nothing can change you not, like from the time until you're fit after 30 you've developed into the person you're meant to be so i was like that's so interesting so from when you're a child your habits and everything it's based on how you were brought up the mm-hmm. things that were instilled into your experiences they also shape the way that you look you resolve conflict and you behave so with having said that it's mm-hmm. also important to analyze can be you're having a, a fight with your partner in the heat of the moment you're like you know what let me reason awesome. let's not attack the person but think about why they are reacting this way you know yeah. and be sensitive towards that Yeah. Not that people should be like making an excuse about yeah. certain behaviors that they have that are not good. Mm. Um but yeah. Yeah. Uh, and let's try talking about net traits. I just want to bring in that thing of toxic traits. Also another toxic trait of mine uh used to be I'm getting better at it like if I don't agree with this thing then that's that. <laughs> like I don't agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I've Almost learned <laughs> and I've learned that and I've learned that like you don't you don't always have to agree with a certain situation or a person to be kind to them or to help them. Mm. Like if somebody you feel that the person is being over emotional about um you know a particular situation um you don't have to say no deal with it I'm not going to help you because I don't agree that this is how you're supposed to be acting. We are deaf and woke. You can still maintain that view but you need to be gentle and 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 have empathy and understand as 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 Uli no Sijo understand that they, this person is acting the way that they're acting because of their background. You don't necessarily agree that that's the right way that they're supposed to be acting but that doesn't excuse you from being a husband and a partner in that particular situation to say it's okay babe because of a right man emote yakhi biwe yo i i tell them emote biwe yo sir no be biwe we're going to get through it we need to move you know so you don't you don't, you don't yeah yeah so you don't always have to agree with how the zoom zegel how people mm-hmm. react to certain situations so but but you need to still have empathy and still help them through that process and 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 be there for them Mm-hmm. Yeah so I that's how we deal it. basically I think without different backgrounds so I'm empathy and understand why a person is the way that they are and also challenge each other also mm. to outlearn certain things <laughs> the background you you know um to try and slowly move uh towards being one and those things don't happen overnight uh they take years sometimes for you to be fully at one mm. uh, it's not a two year it's not two years of marriage there are people who 10 years they're still figuring each other out 
So people don't get married because they understand and they know each other 100%. It's still a work in progress, you know, probably for the rest of your life. Sure. And it just gets better and better at understanding each other. That's true. Okay, we've dealt the conflict in your relationship and misunderstandings. Yeah, how do you deal with conflict in your relationship and misunderstandings? I think talking about it, for me personally, yeah. talking about it, um, writing things down so that you don't forget. And when you're talking about them, you remember and you don't focus on um, attacking a person. You focus on the problem. Yeah. Because you need to also understand that you are trying to resolve a problem. You're not trying to resolve each other. Yeah. yeah you're trying true. to resolve a problem. And always remember that you're on the same team. Yes. And you are not yes. like... You want to win. Wanting to win and fighting against each other. You're trying to resolve a problem together for the benefit of your, your relationship, relationship or your marriage. It's not me against you because the minute you have the mindset of me against you it's a natural thing for people to want to protect themselves if they get into an argument mm. so if you're having that mindset of wanting to win you'll always butt heads and not find a resolution yeah so yeah so you hit the nail in the head uh when you have conflict <laughs> always remember <laughs> That for so long as the other person in the relationship is not happy, you will also not be happy in the relationship. It's impossible if you live in the same house and the other person is not happy. Mm -hmm. uh, that one is over happy. Unless you really don't care about the relationship, you you on your own. Because when my wife is happy, I'm very happy. Everything. And when I'm not happy, Naguye is called Invisostag or some things won't happen. So sometimes when we have conflict, you must always have that in mind that, that you must have that selfish element. But you know what? I'm also resolving this conflict for myself. Um, if I'm trying to win, I can win. But the, the consequences of me winning is that the other person is not going to be happy, which means that at the end, I will also not be happy. So having that at the back of your mind as well to say, let's, let's focus on the issue. What is the issue that we're dealing with? At the present moment, let's tackle that. And mm. and also, like, I believe in this very, very much, that try to speak about things after the effect. In time, if something happens right now and, and the emotions are high, give yourself a couple of... Uh, I saw something on, I think I read it, um, when somebody says, like, they, need them, they don't want to talk about it right now, um, it shouldn't be more than 30 minutes, which I don't agree with. Uh, I think I it depends. <laughs> I, it depends on the person. It shouldn't be 20 minutes because 20 minutes, the yeah, I mean, is still like analyzing this whole situation, how, you know. Uh, but yeah, that's what uh, an expert said to say that if somebody said they're not ready to speak in times of conflict, give them time. But that doesn't mean that the person must not speak for a week or week. two days or a day. Uh, you know, uh, you must try and, and walk away, come down, and come and resolve the issue as soon as possible. My rule of thumb has always been a day, which is bad. If I want to talk to you tomorrow morning when you wake up, I don't mind to spend the whole night thinking about it and wake up and speak about it. But experts say not more than 30 minutes, so I'm working on that. Yeah. I agree with that. I, I like talking about well, it. You want to talk about it now? No, like if you say give me a moment, I'll leave you and then I'll come back in 30 minutes or an hour to be like, are you ready to talk about it? Because <laughs> yeah. it's still fresh in my mind, the feelings of how I felt in that time. And the emotions are still, are still also fresh. fresh. When Isn't there a risk? No, if you've calmed down. Like I'm a person that gets over things easily. I think that's where that's, we that's, differ. That's where we differ. Yeah. Like, me, you I take don't. time to get over there. And for me, like, you can do something and then I can have an hour to calm down and then after that I can so revisit yeah. it yeah. and be like... Hence, oh. I say, hence I'm saying um, that 30 minute rule probably comes from the perspective of somebody who gets over things really quickly. Because mm -hmm. other people within 30 minutes, they still want to punch you in your face. <laughs> they, haven't, wow. they haven't really come <gasps> down to, to speak to you. Mm -hmm. They need a, a, a longer period of time, but... But I, I agree that, like, you can't go 
two days without talking to each other or say Quinto that you need to address. Because two days is going to become three, and three is going to become a week, and a week is going to become a month, and then things are just going to spiral out and of And also what happens when you get used to that whole yeah. not talking? Yeah, yeah. Then how um, we've covered Wonder that. Dad. How do you keep elders away from your marriage? <laughs> Tell them stay away. <laughs> they must do with their own marriage. Just, <laughs> I think the best thing is to be respectful and just do what you guys want to do. But you obviously don't have to tell them that you're gonna do what you want to do. Like for us, for example, there are many things that we have done that people are like, oh my God, how could you do that? You know, why are you behaving that way? And I think what's important is, for example, if my in-laws are throwing me under the bus, it's important for my husband to stand up for me, mm. pa in his angle, because kukukwabu. And if my family, which are his in-laws, are throwing him under the bus, it's important for me to stand up for him. Because if I don't yeah. protect my husband, nobody will. Yeah. Same applies as, as if he doesn't protect me from will. his family, nobody will. My mother will. <laughs> no, she definitely will. Shame. <laughs> and I know your Shame. mom's got my back too. She will. Your, if there's anything about my mother-in-law, she will protect yeah. me. She mm -hmm. literally says, "Umtanamlo, I zo kwenze galonto." I just have a so cool is Lali. The umtanam, magasale kapa and finen the nicks, magasale na banya bantuana. She says she believes as like how chadile you become umtana kena. You're not umola gazana. Same as mom. Yo, my mom would kill for Zola guys. Yeah. Yo, she That's loves him. <laughs> so like what? Yeah. Mm. yeah. And Rudy also like. Um, set boundaries from the word go mm. uh, about your marriage um, because if you're that type of couple that goes to mom and dad everything go, every time something goes wrong or to see so to, put, to report um, all the things that go wrong in your marriage then you're outsourcing um, the, the, your responsibility in the marriage of sorting out your mess to your parents, everything needs your the opinion of your parents, or even if it's not your parents, other elders, about the outsiders in your marriage, you're outsourcing your responsibility um, to them. You just only want the nice part when, of this marriage. Mm. But the moment things go wrong, you you go and, and run uh, to elders outside. When you do that, then you're inviting them into the relationship uh, to start interfering. And so, so set boundaries from the, from, from the word go. Uh, try to, to deal with things. Uh, as much as possible to protect each other from each other's families. But it's called, cool, obviously, like if when things are, are bad, uh, you must, you must um, go to, to your family. Uh, you don't stay for that nonsense in a relationship because you don't want to take things outside. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if things are really bad and you feel like you'll know when things are bad, but hey, no man, then you must, you definitely have to go tell your parents that, hey, this is how I'm feeling in this relationship. These are the things that are, are happening. So that Amanda Batala can come and intervene. Mm. But not out of, out of any situation. Ba, 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 we are an hour late. And when she went out with her friends, they figured it was an issue. So they didn't have to say anything. They didn't have to say anything. Then it's not that problematic now. Because that's something that I'm supposed to handle myself. But even if they didn't have to say anything, I'm going to lie to them. I must imagine. pick up a phone and call our parents or call my parents <laughs> for them to intervene because they have a young in situation. So that's the boundaries. Mm. Boundaries. Um, yeah. I think it's the last question. Um, Two more questions. I think we've covered that. How has the tra transition from relationship to marriage been? We've, we've covered, covered that. that. Yeah, in a way. Mm. The only difference is the involvement of parents, really. Uh, or families bringing them together, but everything else has been the same. I think we've covered pretty much. What lessons have you learned from the most challenging times in your marriage? Um, keeping quiet. <laughs> keeping quiet. <gasps> no, I'm joking. Um, I think I've, like we have covered that in terms of remembering that you're not an yeah. enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And looking at 
like everyone has a role to play in a relationship. So it's always important to introspect and ask yourself, like what role did I play? Yeah. And what role did the other person also play? Yeah. Um, like have honest conversations, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, I think in in a, in a way, like in every challenging situation in 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 our marriage, we we've made mistakes on how we address um um some challenges that we have, but we've learned, we've certainly learned um, from 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 those situations. Hence, everything we've spoken about, how to resolve conflict, how to try and resolve things within you know nobody to how to focus on the problem as opposed to each other. Um, so all of those things that we're talking about, actually lessons that we've learned through some of the difficult times that we've 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 been through in our marriage. Uh, it's not things that we knew <laughs> it's not, coming into it's the relationship. Not. It's it's been it's been lessons that come from hard moments um, that we've we've uh, we've uh, had to go through in our relationship, and that's how you grow really. That's yeah. how you gain wisdom. That's true. Yeah. And I feel like people must also understand that marriage is a lot of work. Like it's yeah. not roses. You learn, you make mistakes. Yeah. People always like, oh, guys, do you fight? Yes. You look so cute. You look so in love. <laughs> guys, you guys will have fight. Yeah, it's like part it of is. the process. It's like, yeah, that's what love, love, there's a thin line. Mm. Yeah, so because you have so much expectation from someone you love. So you much. expect so much. You're so and then much. when things don't get in your way, you get hurt so much. So because much. you expect so much. And and that in itself is, is the recipe yeah. for conflict. So there's no way that if you're in love with somebody, you're in a relationship with somebody, you won't fight. Those mistakes will happen. Misunderstandings will happen. Her, her hearts will get hurt. Be broken. And mm. yeah. Uh, are you guys planning on having a third baby? That's between us, guys. That one. None of your business. That one is between us. Maybe there's one in the way already. It's baking in the oven. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about because I've got there a was from my man. No, they're pregnant again. No, guys, that one is. Guys. That that one is between the two of us at the moment. If yes. we're gonna have a third child or not. Uh, or when or whatever, yeah, you guys must wait and see. You must subscribe so they put my post where I announce it. Follow the by the Instagram. Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's the end of it. Yeah. It's the end. Yeah, nice questions. Nice questions. They were so cute, eh? Well, they help you to reflect. Mm, they do. Also, yeah, nice yeah. questions. Guys, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do the right thing, please guys. do the right thing. Thank you so much for the love. Until next time.